Now that's what I call a good old fashioned ass whooping. Uh, welcome everybody to another one of these fun post race streams. Even if the race itself wasn't as entertaining, I guess, as uh, many of us would have wanted, it still has some merit to talk about. Uh, there's stuff going on with the truck playoffs. I'll have to, I'm going to double check and see if anybody has any updates on that. But we'll get into the finishing order. Talk about what happened. Honestly, I think the first stage was about the highlight of the race. It kind of all went downhill from there. Uh, talk about the winner of Ty Majeski and basically go into the weekend, talk about what you guys want to talk about and uh, go on from there. I don't see. Okay. Uh, we do have the points right now. So I will uh, let you know about the, the playoffs right now heading into Milwaukee in two weeks. Right now, the cutoff is Ty Majeski with a win. Uh, from there, you got Corey Heim, uh, who is plus 47, Eckes plus 39, Hosevar plus 35, Zane Smith plus 29, then Enfinger 24 up. Then really it's the top two and the bottom two above and below the line that are the ones we're going to be talking about. Rhodes plus four, Sanchez plus two, Crafton minus two, and Matt DiBenedetto minus three. That is your playoff battle as we go now i will get to that super chat in a moment let's talk a little bit about this race get through the finishing order and i'll get it up on the top of the screen once we get through it uh but this was the t sport or i believe they said it was thor sport 200 at they call it lucas oil indianapolis raceway park it's irp i don't care it's irp uh this race was 200 laps long an hour 49 minutes and 39 seconds total it had three lead changes among three leaders, five cautions in total tonight. Ty Majeski took him behind the woodshed, won this race, got the redemption uh, from both this race last year as well as uh, that, that meltdown at the end of Richmond, the bad strategy. Uh, he finished three and a half seconds over Christian Eckes. Lane Riggs with a third place run, and I think this is where we can... Um, we can tie in that super chat from Shearank earlier for 10. I want to thank you for that. Uh, saying, dude, Lane Riggs better get a full-time ride next year. I think he's proven that he deserves a chance. He really does deserve a chance. Uh, but <sighs> it's all about money. By the way, like that like button, sub if you're new, all that stuff. I know it's late. We got to. I'm sorry. These late truck starts, they got to stop. Like Looking at the, the schedule, I believe there's. One or two more that start like 9 p.m. Eastern time is pretty damn late, especially in your in Eastern time. Um, looking ahead too, I mean, you got you got a 9 p.m. start for Kansas, 9 p.m. start for Bristol, uh, and a 10 p.m. start for the finale. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my God, that's terrible. Uh, so I'm gonna get into that now. These these late starts. Um, they gotta be worked on. Uh, even if you just start at eight, like an hour earlier, man, that is, I mean, 10 PM Eastern time for the finale this year. You know, I, I know for a lot of you, it's 11 o'clock at night right now. Uh, it's 10 o'clock at night here. Really getting a little overboard for it. Um, but that's just my opinion on it. Uh, but getting back to the finishing order, Carson Hosevar brings it home fourth. And then you got fifth for Zane Smith. William Swalich uh, comes home with a sixth place run. Uh, seventh for Raja Karuth. Then Corey Hyman, eighth. Ninth, Matt Crafton. Tenth, Matty D. Matt Benedetto didn't run too well during the race, but still had a pretty good uh, finish when all was said and done. Uh, Nick Sanchez comes home 11th. Grant Enfinger, 12th. Jake Garcia, 13th, 14th, Chase Purdy, 15th, Tanner Gray, then Ben Rhodes in 16th, 17th, Jake Drew, Jack Wood rounds out the lead lap guys in 18th. And then we get to the man that everyone was talking about when they weren't talking playoffs, Shane Van Gisbergen. Hey, look at that. I said his name right. Not that hard. Uh, SVG, it's just easier to say during one of these, SVG, uh, did about what you should expect from that truck. Um, we, we had a bit of a debate about it in the chat before we went live, but it's not the greatest truck. 
out there. I mean, even even with you know, I won't say better, but more experienced drivers getting into it. Really was running around 16th, 17th. Uh, so I don't really see it as a bad run. I see it as, as an expected run. Uh, it was a serviceable run. I, I was not expecting him to compete for the win. I think a top 10 was the ceiling on this, uh, but that's about it. Uh, other than that, I will say this. I do think he's going to be a real threat for the win at Indianapolis, especially if the restart zone change uh, would uh, not cause as much stupidity going into one. Uh, if you don't know, they're moving the choose V to like the back stretch before like right as you get into the corners. And then the restart zone is right before the final corner so they can get a basically a rolling start and spread out the field a little bit more. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he runs top five in that one. I picked him to win. Um, more or less just because it'd be he'd be someone I trust to be up there. Uh, but I'll say this. You know, he's sponsored by Red Bull over in Australia. Uh, if Shane wins on Sunday, I will open up the Sunday post-race stream after the cup race downing a Red Bull. All right. I, I'll write it down too. I will write down right now, get a Red Bull. Uh, because I think that he... Will compete up there. I don't know about win, just because not everything's going to be in his favor. Um, but yeah, so I'll open up just like that with a Red Bull. Thank God he's not sponsored by a beer sponsor or something. And <laughs> but then we'd really be having a lot of fun. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up being that uh, Peter Griffin meme when he drinks Red Bull. Uh, but yes, SVG, Shane Van Gisbergen. 19th first car one lap down or first truck I should say one lap down serviceable run uh you know didn't really cause any issues you didn't hear his name much which I think is probably what he had hoped most for uh I don't think he was expecting to win I don't think if anyone was, was if anyone was expecting him to win this race I think they were vastly overestimating how he'd do Behind him was Taylor Gray, a lap down, then Logan Bearden, a lap down, and Daniel Dye, 22nd, one lap down. Uh, from there, two trucks finished two laps down. That was Matt Mills in 23rd and Lawless Allen, 24th. Uh, then two trucks finished both oh, three laps down and two trucks finished four laps down. Brett Holmes and Tyler Hill, 25th and 26th, finished three laps down. And then Connor Jones and Landon Lewis, uh, 27th for the 66th, Lewis, 28th. Four laps down. Chris Hacker, 29th. Five laps down on the day. 30th was Stuart Friesen. 17 laps down. Had some issues early. Had to go behind the wall and then come back out. And there, last six finishers were out of this race. That was 31st place Haley Deegan. 32nd place Dean Thompson. Spencer Boyd, 33rd. Tyler Ankrum, 34th. Colby Howard, 35th. And 36th, Greg Van Alst, who can't have any good luck. In any of his starts that aren't in ARCA, it seems. Um, but we're going to post those up at the top here, if I can find it. So many tabs. Uh, as well as what we, what we will be doing uh, for streaming schedule for the rest of the weekend. Uh, just a reminder, this time next week, I will be on IDK Players Channel co-commentating the duels to set the lineup for the NWP 400, which is August 22nd, Tuesday night. At 7 p.m. East, uh, 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, but let's get into this race and talk about a bit of the uh, point by points of it. So Christian Eckes was on the pole. Zane Smith was to the rear. Definitely a bit of a handicap going into this race. Uh, I'll say this: nice crowd at IRP. They do not disappoint. And I saw in the chat, uh, Napa Racing fan 927. Had put this in, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in as a poll. Uh, should IRP have more than trucks? Um, and I'll give you three options for it because it, you really wanted this, and I think it's a good uh, a good uh, question. Uh, because last year he had a crazy race, he had pretty good racing, good finish for the most part. Uh, this year, more dull race. I think that the last two years give a broader picture of what you could ask. Um, so let's see what we got here. Uh, how about this? Trucks only. 
uh, Trucks and Xfinity. And then Trucks Xfinity Cup, if I can spell Xfinity right. So should IRP have more than trucks? Uh, A, trucks only. B, trucks and Xfinity. Or trucks, Xfinity, and Cup. Poll goes up right now. Let's get into this race. Uh, like I said, nice crowd. Uh, I know it's a smaller track. I know that it takes less to look full. But still, looked really nice out there tonight. Uh, from here, let's go through. Lap 4, Majeski and Eckes battle for the lead. Uh, this really would be start out what we knew was probably going to be a very dominant night uh lap 12 you have a caution for a crash greg van alst Haley deegan lewis anchor a minute uh other than van alst most of them were able to continue on uh, some of which were even on the lead lap so just a little cosmetic damage nothing too bad uh but you have the restart heim and majeski will battle for the top spot this was the best of the race this is why i'm saying stage one of this race was the most fun in my opinion. I think that uh, from there, once Majeski took control, uh, I think part of it was the broadcast really focusing just on the front. There were some battles through the pack, but nothing really too much of note. Uh, but those two were side by side, switching it up, crossover moves, really great racing. Uh, but in the end, Majeski, after 20 laps of dogging him, finally clears time for the lead. And at that point, I don't think he lost the lead rest of the night uh you know you had on lap 47 garcia you know forcing end finger into the wall minimal damage uh, but from there the stage ended with majeski winning it over heim ekis riggs garcia hosevar uh end finger ruth tanner gray and zane smith rounding out the top 10 in stage one from there it's pretty straightforward he had a yellow at the end for hacker spinning off the corner uh that was about it uh when it came to stage two that's it that's literally all that you got for stage two majeski ran away from it you had a bit of racing nothing of note and that one majeski wins the stage over heim and finger ekis hosevar the top five in the stage uh and from there you got sawalich zane smith tanner gray riggs and Sanchez, your top 10. That was stage two. There really was not much of note in stage two. Final stage comes out. You get a little bit better, but not too much. Uh, Haim would have an uncontrolled tire penalty. He'd go to the tail end of the longest line, as well as one other. I can't remember off the top of my head. You guys can remind me. Um, but with 74 to go, you got Majeski getting out ahead of Zane Smith and Ekis. Uh, with 69 to go, it was not a very nice lap for Spencer Boyd and Dean Thompson. They crash. Big crash between the two. Brings out caution number four on the night. Leading, again, to another, I'd say just fabulous restart by Majeski. Majeski put a clinic on tonight. Uh, there was no stopping him. I think even if they all pitted and the 10 trucks stayed out and they had a green-white checker, I still think he wins this race. Uh, there, there just was no stopping him. He was the best driver in the best truck, best team tonight. and. They got the win. I will say, this race, uh, Crack and Richmond, they are comparable to Phoenix. If Majeski makes it to the Final Four, which I think is a very big possibility, he may be your championship favorite. If if that if you want something big to take from tonight, this is it. Um, from there, you get this restart. It took only a lap before uh, another incident this one where deegan i believe she got wrecked they really didn't show the whole incident uh it wasn't her fault she wasn't running too well she's running about where van gisbergen was um but just another poor run for deegan uh beforehand not not much speed and then gets taken out being stuck with the squirrels um you know it's not her fault on this one it's just she, she running in the back it, it it's how it goes uh sometimes you can get through clean sometimes you get cleaned out and unfortunately for her this week, she got cleaned out. Uh, by the way, going to stop the poll right here. You guys have spoken and spoken vastly. Uh, you think that at least Xfinity should come. 63% of you think IRP should have an Xfinity race. 19% uh, of you say all three. And 17% of you say, yeah, just the trucks. I believe they'll have to have a lot of upkeep or like upraising of this 
track in order to to get more than trucks from what i heard i don't think it's going to be too big of i don't think it's going to be too big of stuff coming there i think we're going to stick with just trucks for a couple years uh if, if you're asking me i think it should be xfinity trucks at irp you bring the brickyard back if the brickyard fails you got your backup plan uh but the indianapolis motor speedway is a draw for tv just doesn't matter what or who races there compared to the normal race for whoever it's, it's not, it's not going to happen. Uh, they're never going to leave Indianapolis as long. I, that, that's what I've learned. I will say, going to Indianapolis, even with it you know, being 20% full, the history of that place, it is amazing. I recommend to anyone, whether it's NASCAR, the Indy 500, which I want to go to the Indy 500 one year, uh, go to Indianapolis, man. Uh, talking about the Milwaukee Mile in the, tra- uh, in the chat, uh, yeah, that is the rumor. The rumor I've heard is the Milwaukee Mile would come back to IndyCar possibly, uh, at the expense of the doubleheader on the road course, because of course they're bringing back the oval. Let's let's not beat around the bush here. They're doing tests. They're doing all this stuff. They're having they're having the oval come back. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> by the way, uh, for all you guys who might like the uh, the tradition I had at the start of the year, I left an old Madden on with the current rosters, and uh, it was Vikings Rams 41 14 Vikings win. So. Obviously, we know this is a completely accurate portrayal of what will happen. So, uh, Darian, if you're watching, you know who'd win. But just kidding. But anyway, let's get back to the race. 52 to go. You have an aggressive restart. Um, Majeski would pin Ekis up towards the wall, but that was about it. Uh, there was a lot of contact through the field in about the first 10 laps after the restart. From there, nothing. Nothing really. I mean, there was, there was a lot of passing, clean racing. Uh, so I will say this, it was not an overly entertaining race to watch in any sense of the imagination, in any way. Um, but, but, uh, I will say having clean racing in trucks is refreshing. Um, having clean racing in the truck series, I will say it again, is so refreshing because we have these stupid demolition derbies almost every week. And I like having... A couple races that, listen, I like crazy races, but I like them in special doses. I do not like crazy races thrown at me all the time. Uh, So having a couple races like this is fine. You know what? We have another one at the Milwaukee Mile. I'm fine. I mean, you look at the rest of the truck schedule. Because, guys, you got to remember, there is not much left when it comes to the 23 Craftsman Truck Series season, which is so amazing to say. I love saying that. You look at the upcoming races, though. Milwaukee Mile, I think it's going to be a relatively calm race. Uh, it's going to be interesting. if they, At the moment, there are no hurricanes, tropical storms, any a major amount of, of long-term foreseeable rain that will be coming towards Daytona at that time. Uh, so I don't want to jinx it. But if Daytona does get rained out, it will probably be on at the same time as the truck race. Um uh, which I believe there was a report today saying that trucks are going to have live pit stops unless Daytona is rained out till Sunday. So, a lot to look at there. But I think Milwaukee is going to be pretty tame after Daytona for the cup race the night before. Uh, I think Kansas will probably be pretty tame. Though Kansas can have some pretty crazy races. Listen, I'll be streaming more than likely as long as I can get an internet connection after each Kansas race uh, at the track. So, I'll let you know when I'm there. Uh, but, you know, you have like four races or so that are pretty calm. Uh, looking through, you know, Pocono, pretty calm. I think that we'd be due for a Bristol, a Talladega to be crazy. You got Homestead uh, that would be right after that in Phoenix. So we have six races remaining. I think we'll have two or three more crazy fun races. Um, but having having that balance, in my opinion, is a lot of fun to watch. And I'm I'm hoping that that's something that keeps going. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's about it. We'll be live tomorrow after the Xfinity race. Uh, I believe there's no rain. That's really too big a threat there. Same with after the cup race, if it's crazy or if it's tame or if it's somewhere in the middle, we'll be live, uh, NWP on my channel. A lot of big stuff on this channel coming up. Uh, and then of course, you know, NWP 400, August 22nd on IDK player channel. Be there. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a ton of fun. It's gen six Daytona. It'll be fun. Uh, but looking at the chat, yeah, Irvin Alvarado says all sun at Indy. Um, 
I, I'm, I'm good with that, man. I'm good. Sounds like that's what it's going to be. Uh, so I'm cool with that. Uh, Chris McIntyre is saying that, the well, Wisconsin is, yeah, one of the top short track areas. Uh, there is a nice, I wouldn't say underground, but definitely overlooked short track culture in Wisconsin. And even in Northern Illinois. Although, fortunately, part of that's going away with Rockford Speedway. Um, not happy about that. But... Oh, Mike. Hey, Michael. How's it going? Mike Maroots in the chat. Uh, I'm a big fan of only 10 in the truck playoffs. Not everyone gets slapped in there. Feels uh, not everyone gets slapped in there. Feels like early chase days. Yeah, I think a little less, um, a little less drivers in there. Like if Cup and Xfinity, because yeah, I believe Xfinity has 12. If Cup could have 12, I think that'd be perfect. Make it dip. Make it even more difficult to make the playoffs. It should not be uh, like if half the field cleans themselves out at Daytona and I don't know. Well, I, I wouldn't name Noah Gregson, but he's not in the field now. Uh, so let's say Harrison Burton, you know, half the field gets cleaned out at, at Daytona 18th place. Harrison Burton gets past him. Rain hits the track. We're not getting it back going and he makes it. Shouldn't, I don't think that should be the case or it, should, it least should not be that easy. Uh, to do, per se. I, no win is easy, uh, but I, I, I firmly agree with that. I, I'm, I do not like having it be over half the competitive field uh, because if you look at it, it's like usually 30 to 31 cars or 30 to 31 drivers usually run the full schedule and 16 make it in. I don't think it should be over, over half like that. I think it should be much less than half. I think that it should be something that feels special. You should not luck into a playoff spot. Uh, if you know, if we're gonna have playoffs, we need to to do the. I, and I say we NASCAR needs to do its best to make it as legitimate as possible. Uh, it, and I I like twelve. You know, I like Michael saying I like twelve. I think having twelve and then just eliminating three each round. Like what's what's the difference between eliminating three each round and four each round? Yeah, one driver, yes, but if they're better drivers getting eliminated in each round, it makes each round more consequential. Uh so that's my take on it. I you know me though. I am very much a full season purist on this. But if we're gonna have playoffs, we might as well think of the best possible solution with the playoffs. Man, you got you got me monologuing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think that's about going to do it. Not too much to talk about with this race. You know, I'd say middle of the road race. Nothing, nothing we're going to remember in five years, I'd, I'd say. But you know what? Y'all spam some bananas again. Let's make that a thing on this channel. Let's just spam bananas like either at the start or the end of each stream. Y'all have a great night. I'm going to get some rest uh, for tomorrow. Long day of racing and uh, note taking and maybe some other stuff. Uh, so thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate it a ton. Have a good night. Later.